Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, we have almost all the usual suspects. We've got the Zen Master, breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. Mike Zeno, Mike, how are things? Going well. Nice to see you, Mark. Good to see you. We've got the Land Shark, Landon Harris. <laughs> Landon, I thought it was Surf I, you know I thought what? I surf and turf. I do like surf and turf. You've got Landon surf and shot. turf. Landon Harris. Landon Shark Landon. I don't know. We can roll them all in. I'm we well. Can roll it all in. I feel like I feel like it's like a it's like a menu item. Oh, I've, I'm going out for surf and it turf. <laughs> it may know. change next month. It could change. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric Howard Things. Hey Mark. Let freedom ring. Let freedom ring. Absolutely. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield. How are things in Sin City? Good to see Good. you. Yeah. And last but not least, you know him, you love him. Scott Todd, scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? I'm great, Mark. How are you? I'm obsessed with a new YouTube channel. And if you guys haven't seen this channel, uh, check it out because you too will become obsessed. And it's, it's not just the topic of a father and son competing with only $1,000 to see who will make more money, the stock son buying and selling stocks or the wise, more mature father buying and selling raw land. Eric, it's an amazing channel. T tell us a little bit about it. Yeah. So uh, my oldest son, Elijah, and myself started a $1,000 challenge in September. Um, basically, each of us took $1,000 and decided to invest in our favorite asset classes. And you know, mine is land. And I am working to build that $1,000 to $100,000 by the end of 12 months. And Elijah is going to invest in stocks, crypto, options, et cetera. And um, he's going to try and grow that $1,000 to as much as he can before the 12 months is out. And uh, we have a, a weekly recap to talk about what's going on and, and where we're at um, along the way. And it's... Um, it's been fun. It's it's been a good way to to kind of talk to the kids about finances and and get them to start thinking about you know how are they going to invest their money in the future and and so on. And I should mention that my youngest son Ezra, who's fourteen, he does all of our editing and filming, so he's all behind the scenes. Every now and then he'll he'll be in a video, but um, he's he's the one doing the hard work of putting all that stuff together, and it's uh, he does a great job. Yeah, the the Ezra did an amazing job. The, the video editing is great, but as it, it sort of segues into our topic, which is not if you had a thousand dollars, but if you were starting land investing, you're in land investing. Would you want to start with the, these bigger land deals in this current market, or would you want to invest for cash flow? So cash flips versus cash flow in a market that seems to be heading south in real estate. Why don't we start with the person who loves going first? The Zen master. And Mike, am I even, even uh, framing this question properly? I think so. I mean, it's a common question we get when people are coming in and it's like, hey, you know, what are the size deals that you work with? And I lovingly call them the we're in the penny stocks of real estate, right? We're in this little uh, little area where uh, the returns are crazy. We, we, we're not bumping into realtors. We're not bumping into big money. Um, the, the people that own these properties, if they want to sell them, Mark, they sort of have a hard time, right? Because not a lot of commission on an $8,000 property, right? So realtors aren't going to touch them. You know, They're not going to go out put a sign on them. So when you look at the option of, uh, am I going to do like a big cash flip or am I going to come in, and do some uh, smaller deals and create cash flow. Well, I think the simple answer is if people say cash is king, it's cash flow is king. I mean, seriously, right? That's that's what we're looking after. Uh, you don't have to go out every month and uh, 
you know, hunt every month to try to earn your food. It's going to come back to you continually month after month. And I think there's a lot of risk too, particularly in this market where uh, things are really uncertain, right? There's a lot of volatility, I might say, you might say in the market. And when people go after bigger deals, since they are competing with realtors and so on and so forth, the 25 cents on the dollar uh, model doesn't play out as well, right? So they're buying higher and higher, closer, closer and closer to that retail price. And if the market shifts, I feel like they could be holding a, a bag of, uh, of problems there, right? We, as you lovingly say, buy with the uh, uh, warm profit margin of safety, right? We buy 25 cents on the dollar. If the market tanks, we might just, you know, in the worst case, double our money, which is not a bad day. So I don't think it's really, uh, I don't, I don't see how there's any uh, question as to what's better, but some people, they like to go after the bigger dollars there's bigger risk. And I think that's it. Like what, how risk averse are you? And you know, how much consistent money do you want coming into every month? No, absolutely. I, I love that. Uh, that's, a, that's a good explanation, but I wonder what the land shark Landon Harris <laughs> thinks about it. Well, like Mike, I, I really, I feel like this is the safer play, uh, especially with this kind of market. I remember back when I was doing uh, flipping homes and we were in a little bit of a dip and I was really sweating that I was going to lose a lot of money that we had put on some of the homes that we were flipping. I look at it now and we are, we're collecting terms and the default rate is not very high. I mean, most people can afford a couple hundred bucks a month. So I think keeping, you know, you're keeping your terms, you know, at, at what people can afford. And I think when the market goes into this volatile up and down shift, I don't think you can, I just think you can sleep a little bit better at night. And I think just with just the the land geek model, like I just feel like this play will last a lot longer than that, you know, that big hit. And then when you think about it, how quickly are you going to get keep making these big hits? They don't always come that quick. They come very spread out. So, you know, if 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 you're you know, you're living your day-to-day -day life. I think this model just works so much better and just taking a hit or taking the base hits as opposed to you got to hit a grand slam every single time you go out. I just don't know that that's sustainable right now. Yeah, it, I, I have some thoughts on it, but I, I don't want to really just throw those in yet because the irascible, he knows, you know, he's no longer irascible these days. Eric, the technician Peterson, I'm sure has his own thoughts about it. And Eric, what's interesting about your YouTube channel is that you're seeing this week to week, this fluctuation of cash growth versus cash flow with what Elijah's doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess... Thinking about what we do and, and why we do it, um, I think there's a lot of security in the model that, that we operate under. This idea of, of taking these base hits and doing them over and over again. So these lower dollar properties that we're going to sell for $100 a month or $200 a month and do that 10 times, 20, 50, 100, however many times, right? And we're creating this passive income. And if the economy does get worse and things slow down, maybe people start having financial struggles. I expect we're going to have some defaults. But if I have 10 notes or I have a thousand notes, I'm not likely to lose them all. I'm likely to lose a portion of them. But then what, what can I do with with that, well, now I've got inventory again. And that might mean that, well, maybe if I was selling those properties for $100 a month and the economy's bad, I might not be able to get $100 a month anymore, but maybe I can go sell them for $50 a month. And yeah, that's less than I was getting before, but maybe I can do it for a longer term and still get the same return. It's just slower 
at my, with my money coming back. And, you know, when I start to think about it that way, I just, I think there's so much security in what we do versus, you know, this idea of taking a more expensive asset and trying to flip it at a, at a smaller margin. Now those numbers may be drastically bigger, you know, maybe you're making 30, 50, a hundred thousand dollars on a sale. However, as Landon was saying, those might come every six months or every three months, or if the economy gets bad, you know, maybe you lose that margin you had, and now you're only you maybe going to make ten thousand or break even, or worse yet, you know, could you lose money in that scenario? So, um, I don't know. That's that's kind of my perspective on it. I think that you know, tying it back to our, our YouTube channel. Uh, which by the way is, is called father son investments. Um, you know, there's a lot of volatility in what Elijah is doing in the stock market, right? He's got to read his, his decisions just right and time them just right in order to maximize his profit because the volatility that happens in the stock market. And so many times now, um, we're only like two months into this challenge. He's missed out on some, some really great opportunities because he sold too soon and you know could have made a lot more money but on the other hand he did take profits and that's a good thing too so i don't know that's that's my thoughts all right who's currently winning you know what elijah just sent me a text about an hour ago he's beating me right now he's right. at uh 1600 and I'm at, I'm at about 1400 right now. Okay. Well, so, you know, given, given where this, this economy is going, uh, can we put side bets on you? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I love it when you call me big Papa Tate Litchfield. What are your thoughts? You know, I know that, uh, there's certain investors out there who are really, really panicked right now. And I'm not one of them. That's what I know. I don't know what the future is going to hold, but I can tell you that my job and what we specialize in is making owner financed properties affordable for everyone. And the way that we do that is we buy our properties right and we're buying at 20, 30 cents on the dollar and we're keeping our monthly payments irresistible. As long as I continue to do that, come what may, we'll still sell land. I love it. Short, sweet, profound. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of how I view this. Like if I want to take on more risk, well, that means I'm going to spend more money, but look, I don't know a single land investor who has had to quit the business because they bought a $2,500 property, right? Like right. those are the properties that we sell and they move and you work those numbers appropriately. You're going to have capital recovery in 12 months. Maybe not entirely, but even if you bump 12 up to 16, guess what? I'm still winning, right? Like it's still a good deal. And at the end of the day, it's taken me, well, I learned this lesson many years ago that it's not what I want, it's what the market wants. And I would love to sell a certain type of property, but guess what? Supply and demand make it so that's not feasible. So instead, I focus on what my buyers want. As long as I keep my attention on those people, the ones that I'm serving, we're going to continue to do business and have success. Absolutely. Absolutely. Scott Todd, I know you love going last after everyone has put in their thoughts. Now you have to come up with something even more original. You know, I, there's not much more to say, right? Because at the end of the day, I think cash flow always beats cash, one lump sum of cash. I could. You can go back to, to stocks and point to that. You know, the, the stocks that have performed the greatest over the longest period of time are those that pay dividends. Why? Because the dividends come in every month, every quarter, annually, however they're paid. And they help to leverage the stock market or to, to basically keep it so that it's growing even in down times. So, you know, even when the stock market's down, there's this old thing. Hey, buy dividend paying stocks, no matter what happens to the stock, you're still earning, you know, three, four, five percent on your money. No problem. If you're buying more stock, great. If not, you know, you still have money coming into it and it helps to offset any, any losses. 
And, you know, I, I just think that cash flow is king more than cash. And like everybody else has said, or like others have said, the, the fact that I'm buying something for kind of pennies on the dollar versus just, you know, I don't know, 20 cents or 30 cents off just makes a much better, um, much better kind of, you know, uh, margin of error that allows me to sleep at night. And then the thing that I know people love, man, is that, and I see it all the time on Landmoto, is they, they love the fact that there's owner financing. They don't have to worry about a bank. Someone, I was talking to a, an end user the other day, actually, and they were telling me that they went to a bank for a loan and the bank told them no. And it's not because they had bad credit. It's because the they did not meet the strict repayment terms of the loan, meaning that, you know, this was not, um, this was a secondary property for them. So it, they didn't have the debt to income ratio that, that the, the bank needed for the short period of time that the bank was going to loan them the money. So they didn't qualify based on the bank terms. And they said that the, the thing that they loved was the fact that the owner didn't ask them how much you make. Uh, you know, they, they didn't care about that. What's your debt to income ratio? They just made the down payment. And it's basically like, hey, you know, we know that we're going to be okay, you know, because we're the finance source, we know we're going to be okay. And if for some reason the, the someone can't afford the land, that's on them. It's not on, on us. So I think that, uh, I think the term steals win at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, if, if we take like, uh, let's just take a sexy industry. Let's just take Silicon Good Valley. Coin. Or yeah. yeah, yeah it used to be, Crypto. Crypto. That used to be really sexy. But let's just say like, um, I feel like it's it's almost like the difference between getting a job and being an entrepreneur in in a in a way where if you get a job like oh this seems on the surface like I'm gonna get this big salary and I get all these benefits right so we could say cash you're gonna get this big cash hit maybe thirty thousand dollars on a flip and if you do it twelve times you make three hundred sixty thousand dollars that sounds great. Same thing if I went to Facebook and I got a job at Facebook and they paid me $360,000 and I got all these perks and I got all the fun food. And then one day, Mark Zuckerberg looks at the stock price and looks at the, the market and lays off 10,000 people. And now you're step back at square one. Versus what if as an entrepreneur, I could work with every company in Silicon Valley. And if one or two start to struggle, that's okay. I've got all these other customers. So Eric made a good point. When you have a portfolio of notes, well, a percentage of them might fall out, but you it's you just go back and resell it and you can get that cash flow where when a complete market drops, it's almost the same thing as getting unemployed. Plus, you could lose your capital because you don't know where that next flip is coming from. So it's the difference between, I think, financial security versus financial insecurity, where I would make the same argument to Elijah, great if he wins in 2023 versus you know buying stocks. But what's he doing with that cash now? He's going to pay taxes. He's going to keep doing it. And what happens if he makes a bet on crypto and he's wrong, right? And he loses all of it one day where slow and steady, Eric keeps building his portfolio day in and day out. Maybe if someone falls out, big deal. They've lowered his cost basis and he does it again and again and again. And it's the difference between compound interest and growing slowly and growing your wealth versus say being rich, which is you know, maybe a little bit more sexy because you can see it, but wealth is invisible and allows you to solve not just your money problems, but also your time problems. I don't know. Anybody, does it, is that a good analogy? Tate, it's like, eh, it's okay. No, I like it. I think it makes perfect sense. I mean, look, at the end of the day, uh, I trust the asset class that I'm investing in, the asset class that I'm buying and the asset class I'm bringing to market. And you guys know what I like to do with it. You know how I like to price it. And as long as I'm staying in those that comfort zone, 
you know, there's not a lot that can deter me from pressing forward, right? Defaults aren't always a bad thing. Exactly. And when they come, we don't stress out. Yeah. Well, I thought it was a really good topic and uh, I'm glad that we, we brought it up because it, it does seem to be on people's minds and you know, what else is on people's minds? Who is going to do the tip of the week to provide value of a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. I know it's the land sharks turn this week, but before we go to him, Let's give a shout out to our sponsor, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can transform your life. Start building that passive income with no renters, no rehabs, no renovations, no rodents, and have that cash flow coming in month in, month out. Sleep well at night, but do it safely, quickly, efficiently with Scott Todd, who's done it thousands of times as your Sherpa. Learn more, go to landgeek.com forward slash training thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Oh, and by the way, I know what you're thinking. Well, how much is it going to cost me? It ain't going to cost you nothing. Guaranteed. You're going to make back that investment in your, in your flight school tuition, 180 days or less, guaranteed. Just show us your work. Landon Harris, the land shark, what is your tip of the week? Okay, so... Now that I'm retired, I have all this free time. So I'm, I'm reading a lot more. I'm, I've never read this much in my life. So I just have all this free time. So I picked up this book. Um, I don't know if you guys seen the movie Up with the... Yeah, yeah. Love yeah, that. okay. All right. So Taria calls me the dog in Up, the talking dog, because she's... I'm always just talking and then I'll squirrel a little bit and just get distracted. <laughs> so... So I, I started looking for something that would help. And I actually stumbled upon this book. It's called Master Your Focus. It's it's by an author called uh, Thibaut Mohis. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, I'll, I'll put it in the chat because it's not spelled the way it's, it's pronounced. But basically, it's a book that kind of gives you step-by-step and step-by-step instructions and strategies of how to kind of focus and Focus on the things that you need to complete. And it also gives you a, a point of way, a way to kind of uh, put things in order of what's important now. And also, as I'm reading through this a little bit further, it's also taking you through a point of where some people start one business and then they get distracted and then they go and want to jump into another business. And I hear that from people all the time. And even in this uh, business. They they start this and then they get distracted by, oh, well, that's better. I mean, I can tell you that this business is great, but this book is actually a really good book to kind of, kind of ties that in. So I'm I'm recommending this book to everybody. It's just been a really good book so far. Um, I'm about four chapters in, but I'm loving it so far. Um, so something cool to check out. And like I said, I'll put it, um, I'm going to put it here in the chat. Yeah, I see it. T H I B A U T Maurice. He's got a lot yeah. of books too, but this one's yeah. like blowing up on Amazon. It's got 738 four and a half star ratings. Yeah, it's been pretty good. Been I've been really impressed with it so far. So wow. that's that's what I struggle with. So I was like, somebody's gotta be dealing with it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Well. I do want to just thank the listeners and remind them that the only way we're going to be able to continue to basically metaphorically twist Landon's arm to do these tips of the week, because none of us could actually do that in real life, is if you just three little favors, follow, review, and rate the podcast, not in that order, follow rate and then review the podcast in that per- perfect order. Send us a screenshot of that review support at the I'm going to send you a signed copy of dirt rich, which right now is worth about three Bitcoin on the uh, secondary market. So please do so. It, it actually, even if you're not doing it for the free book, it just helps us. Um, and we appreciate it. So, so please do it. Uh, are we good? 
Mike, we're good. Yes, very good. Eric, we're good. Landon, we're good. Tate, yep. yep. Scott Todd, awesome. All right, well, let's do this. One, two, three. Let's let freedom, 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 freedom. Not bad. Not bad. So before the, the podcast, we talked for about 20 minutes about traveling. And uh, Scott Todd's got a, an amazing tip that he won't share. It's not my tip. It's not my tip. I'm just telling you what I saw. But if you are ever curious about, if you let's just say that you're on a flight with Tate and he reclines, there's a way to get him to stop reclining. And it, I'm, not me, it, it, this bait, man. I'm not I'm not taking listen, this bait. It's nope. only a nope. tape not getting me today. Tur- now Tari now Tari is not a, was a recliner too, right? Yeah. Oh, she, yeah. She's team recline. Tate's team recline. The rest of us are team I half recline. You oh you half recline. Oh half. I won't go all the way. I'll give a is little Is it really a half? Is it really a half? Yeah. I give some room. No such thing. <laughs> I don't I need know. a little space. I, I, I feel like you, you, you golden rule it. Now, but what do you do though when the person reclines? And then do you recline? Well, here, okay, here's, here's, the, here's a, a topic for you. Let's say the person behind you reclines and the person in front of you reclines. Do you then feel like, well, I can golden rule it, I can recline. Eric says no. No. Can't Mike, break the rule. In that scenario, would you still recline? I don't even I don't ever consider reclining. It's just not something I do. I'm a non-recliner. I don't hey, know. Hey, do you do you recline, like on, on like like let's just say you're flying to Phoenix and to visit me? It's a 45 minute flight. Would you recline? <sighs> I don't know. I mean Probably 50 50. I mean, I don't know. Comfort first, man. Like, I figured you paid for it. You have a yeah. the laptop. Up a no, 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 no. As no, no, soon no, as no. they recline, it knocks your laptop down. I mean, come on. It's not cool. Look, uh, first of all, I like the haze tape. But in all seriousness, the guy gives the best travel advice ever. So I'm in Mexico City and I vox Tate and he's like, look, this is what you want to do. Don't get sick when you're in Mexico City or anywhere where you're traveling. Get Cipro and take a half tablet of Cipro in the morning, half at night. You'll be good as gold. So this is day two in Mexico. And I'm there for uh, Roberto's wedding. And I'm in a small town in Xochitepec, Morelos, Cuernavaca. And I walk and I go to the pharmacy and I say to the pharmacist using Google Translate, Cipro, por favor. And he then begins to speak Spanish to me, which I don't understand. But he starts speaking long sentences. I'm like, I don't understand. So he puts it into the phone. You have to have a prescription for Cipro. So, okay, not a problem. I'll tell you what, if I had that Cipro, my trip would have been very different. Yeah. Very, very different. Uh, yeah. I don't want to go too much in detail, but you can imagine Montezuma getting his revenge. And it could have all been avoided if I had just asked that question a week earlier and gotten my prescription. So now, next time I travel, I'll be getting Cipro. Tate? Um, just, Yeah. I'll set you up right. I'll I, get your your uh, first aid kit ready to go. Yeah. Is there is there anything? Uh, is there any other travel tips besides that one? Yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot. Uh, I think a lot of it depends on where you're going to, right? What you're going to have access to. But uh, I'm trying to think what comes to mind. Nothing comes to mind immediately. But there, Mike, what, what's stuff. your What's your favorite travel tip? My favorite travel tip? Yeah. 
um, download some good YouTube videos before you get on the plane. Okay. Landon, favorite travel tip? Oof. So we just upgraded our luggage. I'm, I'm just, I don't care about luggage. But Taria's like, eh, we need some good luggage. So we got this Monos luggage. Okay. That stuff is tough. M O N O S. M O N O S. And it comes with these little compartmental, it kind of downsizes, it compresses everything in your luggage. I got to say, it's not cheap, but as far as like traveling goes, that stuff is great. I mean, they just beat the crap out of your luggage. I'll have to check that out. Oh, yeah. Oh, Um, it's. It's it's another level of luggage. I had no idea, but it's 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 pretty good. Uh, I'm in the market for it. Eric, oh, best yeah. travel tip. I'm with Mike. I like to make sure I've got plenty of content to uh, enjoy while traveling. So just be prepared. Scott, be comfortable. Get the <laughs> highest class of service that you can afford. <laughs> Oh gosh. <laughs> it's I was also gonna say dress for where you're going, but always assume it's gonna be cold on the airplane. Right? Yes. Okay. It's gonna be cold. You're at thirty-five thousand feet above sea level. It's gonna be freezing. Even if you're going to Hawaii, travel in a long sleeve. There's that's nothing a, worse than being on a plane cold. That's a great tip. And also uh the compression socks. Oh, I yeah. think th- yeah, those help a lot as well. It's necessary. And yeah, absolutely. I w- I would say every time you go to a new city, do a food tour. It's a great way to get to know the city and experience the culture and the history without going to say, oh, oh I don't know, a boring museum. And well, you meet other other tourists and travelers and the food's, Outstanding. The Mexico City food culture, outstanding. Couldn't, couldn't recommend it enough. So, Mark, when we were in Portugal, we, um, we used a website called um, Tours by Locals. Okay. And found this guy that was just top notch, right? Like, wasn't through a, a touring company or whatever. And it was a private tour. So it was just like my wife and I. And if we would have had our family, it just would have been us. So it was not that. In fact, it was probably on par with what I would have paid through a touring company, honestly, for a larger group. And it was just more private, intimate. And um, it was we, we booked the whole day tour. And I'm not saying this is the way it always is, but like we booked a whole day tour uh, with this guy and it required a car. And so here, here we are, man. Like it's my wife and I, we're, we're at the hotel the guy is going to meet us in the lobby with a car, you know, transportation for the day because, uh, you know, we're not going to drive a car. He's going to drive the car. So we walk outside and, and um, you know, here's this black Mercedes sedan with a driver in a suit. And he greets us and we get in the car like like royalty almost, you know. Every, everywhere we went, this tour guide would get out with us but the car would stay or go park somewhere. And when it was time to, to go to the next spot, here comes the driver. We get in the car. That's like next level stuff there. And it, I'm telling you, it was not that expensive either. That's awesome. Tours by local. Yeah. That's a good tip. Tours by local. Yeah. Tours Great local. website. Tours I by, I think it's tours by locals. I'll tell you what, I, I, I'd like to do a tours here for, for, Take people out to Tours eat. By local. I could show yeah, people can, like around Scottsdale, like the best places. Yeah, man. Make some money. You can make some money that way. I don't even want to do it for the money. I just want to meet like cool, interesting tourists. Well, you got to put, you got to charge them something. I, yeah. I, yeah. I'll charge them something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe. Uh, yeah. You could, you could brand yourself like uh, S- S- Scottsdale's Larry David. <laughs> Thank you. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. All right. Well, if you're still listening to this, that's amazing. But uh, thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you guys. See ya. 
Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.